This is the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of April 26, 2021. Fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay, via light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton, the living ocean drifters. This report is pulsing with springtime conditions, blooming diatoms, and the barnacles getting closer to settling. Zooplankton are the animal-like plankton that eat other organisms. Barnacles getting ready to settle look very different from the ones that have been drifting and feeding in the plankton. This one here is the cyprid larva of a barnacle. It has a compound eye, that dark spot, and it's filled with glistening oil globules that it will use as sustenance until it settles and begins its new life. Here's a pheronid worm larva. Look what it has under its hood. That's a dinoflagellate it's trying to eat. There you can see it opening its hood, trying to readjust its food. This funny rounded triangle shape is the siphonauts larva of a bryozoan. The cilia along its edge are used both to help it move in the plankton and to help direct food into its mouth. Notice how it can tug its cilia inside to protect them. Watch this polychaete worm navigate its way across the slide. This lightly speckled bristle worm larva uses its chitae or bristles to help it move Here's a ciliate. It's a tintinid, a single-celled organism. And it uses those cilia, wiggling hair-like structures, to help it move and eat. Phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. This golden dinoflagellate is a ceratium. It's the same kind that was being eaten by the fronid worm. Diatoms are the single-celled algae with cell walls of glass-like opal. And here, this dotylum diatom with a delicate fringe of eyelash-like spines and one large hollow spike at each end. This is a chain of pseudonitsia gliding slowly out of sight. Here, a nice ball of linking diatoms, Catoceros socialis, and next to it, a spiraling spiky chain of Asterionellopsis. These beautiful crystals are grains of sand that are often scooped out of the water along with the plankton. Since they aren't alive, they aren't plankton. Pacific Coast Ocean Weather, the week of April 26, 2021. There are many things that set us wondering what we'll see in the seawater even while we're still out collecting it. Maybe we feel the northerly wind and wonder if upwelling has been injecting nutrients into the surface waters. We notice the lengthening days of brilliant sunshine and think how this might be stimulating phytoplankton growth after a dark and stormy winter. During sample collection for this week's report, it was watercolor that had us taking notice. Before we jump in, another quick game of word association. Grass, green, sun, yellow. Ocean, blue. Wait, that's not really very blue. Fine silts and intense tidal action and the shallow depth keep much of San Francisco Bay a sort of tan. But on Monday, 
The usually muddied waters were for San Francisco Bay, notably teal. To our south, the waters of Monterey Bay were a deep emerald with high visibility. In the shallows, Monterey Bay waters looked nearly tropical. Thanks to phytoplankton growth, sediment, silt, and other local characteristics, our coastal ocean trends more in the green than in the blue. At a sampling site in Monterey, we see this year's color trend from the lower productivity pale green, often sediment-laden waters of winter, to the relatively high productivity deep emerald, less stormy waters of spring. We can look to the sky, or more accurately from the sky, to see our coastal greens mixing into the great big blue. In this real color satellite picture, there are swirls of green offshore. They become easier to see if we simply turn up the volume on the color. To our eyes, the color changes from week to week are subtle, but each reflects a shift in coastal physics, chemistry, and biology. That was the pulse of the plankton for the week of April 26, 2021. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content. Hey, it's Jim Metzner, and you've been listening to The Pulse of the Plankton. Now, if you've enjoyed this program, I would encourage you to find and support your nearest national marine sanctuary, because wherever you may live, the plankton of this planet are always downstream. <laughs>